14-6 to O'Sullivan then. And uh, Thank if you. he could win... Frame 21, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. If he could win three of the four remaining frames this evening, he would render tomorrow afternoon's final session obsolete. So Hendry on the back foot from O'Sullivan's break off. Yes, and this isn't straightforward. He's got to catch this just right, otherwise he'll leave a red on. And he has. He's left a red to the left centre. It's possibly one to the <coughs> left corner as well. He's mighty close to it though. If he plays this one to the left corner, the referee will be having a very close look at this one. This is the safest red from the point of view of not fouling anything. Now, as we saw in the last frame, Stephen Henry had a red to that same pocket and bridging over four balls, it's not easy. Caught Ronnie out as it did Stephen. Choice of reds. This is a big shot. Doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball to be on the black, but needs to get it. Eight. Nine. O'Sullivan's oh, playing so well, I'm uh, pretty well assuming he's going to pot the loose reds. And so the point of interest will be how he develops the bunch. Fourteen. Fifteen. O'Sullivan loves the big stage and loves to put on a show. And the further he is in front... Twenty. ...the more he can forget about the result and just concentrate on performing. Twenty-one. <laughs> Yes, I think all great champions, when they get in front, they're not looking over the shoulder, they're just looking ahead. And he's played some superb snooker today. He's underhit that slightly, has to be said. 28. I know he wants you to be a little low on this red, but maybe not as low as this, but in potting it will bring other reds into play. Could not have played that any better. <coughs> 13. 
34. 35. 42. 43. When we get to this one table situation, Clive, it's like a different venue completely. I mean, we used to the two table early on, and you hear applause and noise from the other table, but it's cathedral like at the moment, isn't it? The expectation of when this young man comes to the table. He's run past the pink. Is he on this red to the left corner? He's got 15. one to the right middle. But he wants it to be on the one to the left corner to stay on the black. And he's just about on it. Do one. Let's see him try and stun round off two cushions here for the two reds just to the right of the black. <laughs> As per usual, inch perfect. 58. 59. O'Sullivan has got his game. And even more important, his mind into optimum shape for this championship. He's had uh, 66. A few implosions here. 67. But this is a remarkable exhibition of sustained excellence. Another frame in the bag. 74. 75. 82. Eighty-three. O'Sullivan in pursuit of his eleventh century of the championship. The sixtieth of the tournament. Eighty-eight. In total. Eighty-nine. It's his own. Fourth century of the day. Ninety-five. Coming 96. up. Yes, and the record for an individual in the World Championship during the tournament oh, as he makes that century. He's held by Stephen Hendry with 16 century breaks. So that will be another target for Ronnie. Stephen had the most maximums with eight, but Ronnie bettered that earlier on with his ninth in tournament play. And now closing in on that record, 16 centuries in the tournament. Settle down, please. One hundred and fourteen. Excellence on a scale of Tiger Woods, Roger Federer, or any other supreme all time great you care to mention? One hundred and twenty three. Even from the straightish 
angle on the blue, he overran it. What Q power. Oh. So there was no tape appearance. But there was a break of 123, which uh, increased the Sullivan's lead to 15-6. And there we have it, that was the 60th century of this year's championship and we are closing in on the record of 68 which was achieved in 2002 and 2007. We've got three days to go. Uh, there's every likelihood that's going to be beaten, especially if Ronnie O'Sullivan continues to play like this. Uh, what was the key shot for you fellas in that last frame? Well, I think uh, we were watching it and really uh, the, the split that he, he made on the reds was absolutely superb. I mean. Uh, just, just talk through this, Willie. Here. Well, the beauty is a lot, a lot of players play this with a lot of deep screw, really, and all they're doing is moving two or three reds. Ronnie's got this wonderful cue action where he can push through the ball, and before the spin takes, it's almost going into the pack and pushing through. And as you saw there, seven or eight reds come into play there. But not only the, the position was absolutely perfect, so you know, he really concentrated on that as well. I think what's impressive is the speed at which he's playing. He seems to be cruising around the table today. Well, we've, all, we've always been amazed how quickly Ronnie can play in the maximum. We always talk about five minutes, 20 seconds, but whenever he's in the balls, he doesn't ever feel pressure in break building. A lot of Thank players, try when they get to the 60 mark and need two more reds and colours, they all of a sudden get excited. Satellite Ronnie doesn't even worry about it. Just a matter of time now, because no matter how well Stephen Hendry plays, if he gets a chance, we know what Ronnie's going to do. He's in a hurry to get to this final, and he needs two more to make it. Well, the only crumb of comfort, not that Hendry will appreciate it, is that uh, he can't lose 17-4, as uh, he did in the, in the 2004... Right, settle down, please. Remember, this is a World Championships. Semi final. There you go. Can he get past the blue just to clip that head on the red on the right hand side of the table? He can't see anything else. Well, Hawkeye thinks he can just get past the blue and snick this red. Yeah. And finding the path in between the green and brown, absolutely superb. Top on the table from Stephen. You can't play a safety shot any better than that. Stephen won't be happy with that one. He's left the red to the left corner. Well, the potting machine has broken down. Touching ball. Missed it, but he's left nothing. But touching ball declared by Kayla Tab, so should be quite an easy path back to the ball end for Stephen. Touching ball, you fire away from the red you're touching, you're deemed to have hit it. Well, going this way, you just got to avoid the blue and possibly the brown to get near the ball cushion. And even the yellow. That's the 81-year-old trophy purchased with uh, half the entry fees of the first championship in the 1926-27 season. <laughs> Stephen Hendry's name is on it seven times, but uh, not for an eighth time this season, it looks like.
just even having a look down here at this, these two reds below the pink, see if there are plants. I don't know why it would interest him, he can't get through to it. Unless he plays a cannon off another red, but that would be very risky. Well, it's, it could be made, but as I say, uh, from where he is, the pink's in the way. He obviously doesn't see a return to Bork. And there's been so much pressure on Stephen all day with Ronnie's play that every shot he's, he's just frightened at one mistake and that could be his last one. So he thought if he got this cue ball near the top cushion he may not leave a red. But there's certainly one on to the left middle which Ronnie can play run to the balk end and the yellows over the pocket as the colour It was difficult, even the way O'Sullivan's playing. He knew, though, that if he missed it, Hendry would be playing from only a couple of inches from the ball cushion. But maybe he can get at the plant. Well, he can't get at the plant, he's playing safe, but he's got to catch it just right, this. Oh, and he's missed it on the way up. Now, what has he left? Certainly the red to the right to the blue is in the open. The one closest to the cue ball, does it go in the right corner? Just about, but it's one of those, he's right to be right behind it. I think the one to the right of the blue is the, the better option. Where's the red going? Surely not, surely not! One. Well, Stephen smiles. The last thing Ronnie needs at the moment is luck. Settle down now. To he who hath, it is given. along the ball cushion in off the yellow seven quite possibly the start of another frame winning break <laughs> Henry was about to get up and then realised he didn't have to, but uh, he was philosophical about it. You have to be. Fifteen. Well, this has gone slightly wrong. The blue doesn't pass the yellow, and he can't get to the yellow because of the blue. So this could be end of visit. Yes, he looks to be looking for the safety. Hendry 
Andrews certainly got the cue ball on the right diagonal there. Oh. Oh. What's going on here, Ronnie? Well, Stephen, you're not getting any help from anybody here. That's remarkable, isn't it? Two outrageous flukes that Ronnie's got. Three. Off the blue, in the pocket. It's a cruel game. Standard. If he was playing that with a rest, you'd have been struggling to play that shot. But left-handed, he... Well, it, just a natural. Eleven. So he's Twelve. had a couple of good bits of fortune here as Ronnie that's kept Stephen in his seat. Nineteen. Hendry still pinned in his chair, as he has been for most of the day. Yeah. Well, there's an implement we don't see very often. And this far away, this is tricky. You expect him to pot it because <coughs> it's quite an easy pot. Now you're struggling the snooker clubs at home because you've got your shade on the table and you you can't get your head under it. Television lights, no problem with that. I remember the first time we came here at the Crucible, there was none of this equipment. <laughs> No, they were the old uh, half butts with the 50 year old tip on. Yeah, and they'd be swaying around like a fishing rod, wouldn't they? 20. But today, with all the extensions, there's not one shot that you can't play without your own cue. It helps. Not sour grapes, I don't just don't know why we never thought of it. Twenty seven. Twenty-eight. <coughs> Thirty-five. Not as intended, Red. Made any difference <coughs> except that he's not at the best angle on the brown. Forty. 
Well, he certainly wasn't in the best position to play from brown to red, but he solved the problem so easily. It would be easy to think it wasn't a problem. 48. Well, nothing much has appeared a problem to Ronnie today. He's been in sparkling form. And it's been, and no disrespect to Stephen, a virtuoso performance. And that's the nature of this game. As we always say, when the other man's at the table, 49. there's nothing you can do about it. And that was frame ball. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 56, and the frame. So, O'Sullivan continues inexorably on, relentless he is, and now leads by 16 frames to six, and is within one frame of a place in the final. And I wonder what thoughts are now beginning to spin through uh, Stephen Hendry's mind. Put yourself in his position at yeah. this moment. I think Stephen just wants uh, this match to finish now, especially when Ronnie had a couple of uh, outrageous flukes there. But you've got to take advantage of that. Uh, there's no point getting a fluke and then just you know, not winning the frame. But uh, because he's playing so well and getting the run of the ball, there's nothing Stephen can do about this. And from Ronnie's perspective, he really is on an adrenaline buzz right now. Absolutely. I mean, Clive said the word relentless, and I think that's ex absolutely right. It doesn't matter how good or bad a player you are. If your opponent's playing like that, you know, and getting flukes as well. That's the, I mean, he had two flukes in one frame, and I think that's the first flukes I've seen Ronnie have this championship. I can't remember another yes, fluke he's had. And he had two in one frame. I mean, look at this one here. I mean, if the yellow's not sitting where it is, the red doesn't go in. It goes in off the yellow. I mean... And this next one was just obviously a safety shot where he's just trying to get a good white. Henry was already coming out of his chair there. And the next one, he's trying to get a good white. And, you know, he, the red's obviously caught the blue half ball. And once again, the yellow's come to his rescue because <laughs> if the yellow's not there, he has to play a safety shot. And he went on to win the frame at that visit. That's when it hurts. I'm sure it does. So Ronnie's now back in the arena. He needs one more for a place in the final for the third time. Will it come now? A master class uh, for O'Sullivan then, but uh, let's not forget the greatness of Stephen Hendry and uh, the trouncings that he's handed out in the past. I think that shot tells us that Stephen's not going to hold back now. I'm sure he'd like to get it to the final session. There's two more frames in this session. Stephen's got to win both of them, otherwise the match is over. <coughs> got the cannon off the bunch that he intended, but the red that he attempted could so easily have finished in a possible position to right middle instead of rolling under the cushion. that not dropped? <coughs> How has that not gone in? I thought it had dropped twice. One. 
Well, there's a loose red above and to the right of the black, and I think if he slots this black in, just playing ball is a natural angle to play for that loose red. Just asking for the cue ball to be cleaned. Kayla Tabu's performed admirably with all these high scores and big breaks going in. She has to give it 100% concentration. Done a great job. O'Sullivan disappointed because he wants to play perfectly. One. And in long spells, he has. Nine. There's one loose red, but he's got a nice angle to go into the cluster, and I think he will. Oh, we knew he'd have the option of this red if he caught them right, and he has, and he's brought... Sixteen. Oh, four or five reds into play. Wait. Sure. Seventeen. And came in this evening, Stephen Hendry, with that 12-4 deficit. And if you want to know what a champion's all about, just look at his performance tonight. I can't think he's played one wrong shot. Well, it'd been easy to let your head drop. <coughs> great player and a great champion. 24. <coughs> He played two quality frames to reduce his arrears from 13-4 to 13-6. Breaks of 85, 54 and 46 in those. But for the next three frames, O'Sullivan kept him scoreless. Just having a good look to see which one of these reds. He'd, he'd like to be on the straightest red, but I don't think it goes. I think the middle one of the three on the right-hand side goes, but that, that middle one that's in a direct line with the cue ball, well, he thinks it does. No, he's playing the middle one. I didn't think the other 25. one went. Surely. Now he's screwed and he's. One red has covered the other. 31. What with the good run that Ronnie had in the last frame and the bad run that Stephen's suffering here. Nothing going right at the moment. Thin cut this. Now. Stephen Hendry, 31. Another say unlucky once again when he put it the pink, he was entitled to be on a red. And, well, you. It springs to your mind, was that your last shot in this year's 888 World Championship? One. Hit it well. Into the bunch well, but fate, as well as O'Sullivan, was unrelenting. Well, said that too quickly. Ronnie off the spot. Well, Ronnie's uh, relenting a little bit. <laughs> He's just having a laugh with Stephen. He's got away with it again. A little scratch of the head.
these two great players are on pretty good terms now. As we uh, see how Sullivan's failed black. They did get at odds a few years ago, but everything between them is fine. <laughs> Yes, I did some shows with them at the end of last season, and uh, yep, they're pals, and of course, great respect for one another. Ronnie knows what a great champion Stephen Hendry is, and of course, Stephen has made it clear to everybody that when Ronnie's at his best, he's unbeatable. Intently on the right there, Adam Duffy, very promising young player who's been awarded the Paul Hunter Scholarship, which enables him to train at uh, the World Snooker Academy, located just up the road, the English Institute of Sport. Yeah, Jimmy White and I played an exhibition, the club he, he plays at, and he can play. Every chance he could be at the Crucible as a player. I'm sure we've learned a lot watching these two great players this evening. Sixteen six in front, and still addressing the problem with the same seriousness as if it was the opening frame. Well, that should be an easy snooker this for Stephen, just to tuck this cue ball behind the yellow. Stephen Hendry for It has to be played slowly, a smother shot. Today. It's not all been about potting and break building, and it's safety shots like that that do force mistakes from your opponent and gets you in amongst the balls. And Stephen's got a bit of a job here to get this safe. Although, if he can just get past the brown, he may be able to rest this cue ball against the top cushion. The only problem is the red he plays, it may be knocking other reds towards the top cushion. Certainly no way back to Bork, it appears. 
So can he find a, a safe place at this end of the table? Can he see enough to play the pot? Didn't think he could see quite enough of it. Maybe try to bend it with the tracer side. This could be it. Desperate attempt at a long red. Might as well at this late stage with so little further to lose. One. Nine. There's uh, the Hendry family. Gordon on the right, who's not much of a player, but he told me at breakfast the other day that his father, Bob, certainly was. He was of uh, professional standard when there was, uh, unfortunately, no professional game in Scotland. Fifteen. He died at the age of 44 and never saw his grandson play. How he would have loved it. Sixteen. Twenty three. Twenty-four. <coughs> Ten points behind. Twenty-seven. A few delicate little positional shots to be played. Mm -hmm. Just watch the way he manoeuvres this cue ball. Picking them off, Stephen Hendry. He's been a credit to himself. 35. And again this evening, most people 36. would have come out and threw caution to the wind from frame one, but as I say, he never really played any wrong shots. He tried his best in every frame. Never let his head go down. 14. And he's proved this year 24. that he's still a force in the game. I think that's the major thing that uh, Hendry will take away from this championship. He wanted to re-experience the feeling of being genuinely in contention and he was until he ran into this genius at the peak of his form. 59. Well, there you see it, 22 ahead, 35 remaining. Yeah. Red, blue will be enough. And this has been an outstanding performance from Ronnie. And just think, it was a couple of years ago when he was playing Stephen Hendry in the UK and did the walkout. And everybody then questioned, did he have the right Attitude. Oh, oh he's coming off. Ronnie Sullivan, 59, and Stephen Hendry. So careless, but since then, he's come back and I was going to say he's played consistently for the last couple of seasons, but 
that was just sheer carelessness. Two. <clears throat> well, if Henry's going to lose, he would uh, sooner lose 17-7 than 17-6. Pink and black still needed. We're going to be coming a little bit further. The black to keep the match alive. Justified here, this authentic genius gave a masterclass. Stephen Hendry did quite well with the very few chances that he had, but it's O'Sullivan who wins by 17 frames to six to go through to the final. Wonderful performance from Ronnie O'Sullivan, a very sporting gesture from Stephen Hendry at the end, albeit he was desperate to keep mm. that match going. I really enjoyed that because Stephen Hendry could almost lip read what he was saying. He was saying, Ronnie, that was one of the most wonderful performances. You played really well and obviously deserved to win, and it was a voter show performance. He's Fantastic. a red hot favourite for mm. this title mm. now, surely, yeah, Dennis. And he put himself, believe it or not, under a little bit of pressure because he wanted to win this with the session to spare. He wanted the day off tomorrow, and if that black had it dropped, he may not have had it. How big an advantage to have a day off tomorrow? I really? think it's massive because Ronnie would have that would have taken a bit out of him playing against a sometimes world champion. He wanted to win so badly. Now he's done it. He'll be going a lot of running tomorrow. I'm sure he will. And how will Stephen Hendry reflect on this campaign? Listen, Stephen Hendry's beat three of the up and coming players, two of them in the top eight in the world. He's he's still there. Don't worry about that. Okay, well Stephen Hendry goes home. Ronnie O'Sullivan goes through to the third final of his career. Stephen John will be back after midnight with a roundup of all the significant action on this second day of semi-final action. Till then it's set thanks to Dennis and to Willie and we'll be back tomorrow with the uh, second and the end of this uh, particular semi-final. Bye-bye for now.